Hey, what's up, friends? This is Pastor Brian from Chapel of Change. Don't forget to check out my autobiography, Young Man Arise. Tells you all the juicy details of how I was arrested for regretfully for murder, tried as an adult in the Compton Courthouse, sentenced to life in prison. Check it out. I'm super excited today because we have a special guest, and I want to bump some of his music, Antoine Hill. Yeah, amen. Thanks for joining me, bro. Nah, I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Bro, I'm telling you, I be bumping this song, <laughs> driving yeah. down a Alondra, yeah. all the way through Compton with amen. my kids. Amen. And it makes me just, my head be just be bumping. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Antoine Hill in the house. I wanted amen. to bump some of his music. Amen. Hey, uh, Antoine, let me ask you a couple of questions, bro. Yes, sir. How old were you when you got saved? Uh, 23. And how old are you now? I'm 36. Oh, so you've been serving the Lord for over 10 years. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. And how long have you been in the rap game? Uh, well, I've been rapping my whole life, but uh, I only really count when I start rapping for the Lord. So it's been about eight years, nine years, something like that. Yeah. Man, I love your music, bro. Man, my kids it, love it, too. We've been bumping God. it. Thank you. I want to ask you a couple questions. Yes, sir. Recently, there was a controversy with Dante uh, Bo, Dante Bo, yeah. And he had this controversy with music. He was bumping Bad Bunny. Yep. And Maverick City actually kind of cut him off. Yep, I saw that. My question to you is, what is your perspective on Christian artists mm -hmm. appreciating yeah. secular music, even to the degree of, like, listening to it to get inspiration? What's your perspective on that? Uh, to get inspiration. So I, I guess there's a whole bunch of layers to that question, but I'm going to just just, get, just keep it cut and dry. Like, uh how does it really benefit us spiritually, though? You know what I mean? Like, what is it feeding us? I, I, I say, I'll say it like this. Um, if I'm going out every day, you know, we're going all around the world, and I'm preaching, um, you know, we, we want you delivered from drugs, and we want you delivered from alcohol, and, um, you know, we don't want you to be promiscuous anymore, and, and God desires these things for you to live a holy life. And then I go get in my car, and I listen to everything that's contrary to that. I'm kind of a hypocrite, to be honest with you. If I'm listening to everything, if, if I'm talking about all these things that glorify God, but everything that I'm listening to does not glorify God and it actually amplifies everything that God is disagrees with, then it doesn't really make any sense. It's almost double-minded, if we're going to be honest. Well, what, if I, what if I'm trying to get inspiration, though? Not, not bumping it in my car, Man. but what if I go to, like, Tupac's old songs Man. and I'm, tr I'm getting inspiration for lyrics and beats. What do you think about that? I think the Holy Spirit writes you writes the, the, the lyrics that you need anyway. I mean, uh, what's what's the better inspiration than the Holy Spirit? If God put the gift and talent inside of you, then He'll give you creative and then new ideas. Actually, we don't need to keep going back to the old ways to get new ideas. To be honest, I mean, I feel like God writes new things in the heart. And if you used to listen to that stuff anyway, I mean, it's still, you know, you you know what it sounds like or you know what it was. You don't have to keep revisiting those things. God, I always want God to give me something new to say a new sound. Like, why do we keep trying to mimic what the world's doing? Why don't we just be creative and do our own thing? So what was your response when you first learned of Dante Bo? Like, what came to your mind at that time? Well, I thought it was a little irresponsible a little bit. I think that we, I think that a lot of people don't value uh, the platform that God has given them as much as they should and don't realize the influence that they have. They don't realize that, you know, my children listen to you and they actually look up to some of these artists. So when they hear certain things or, and they're being pointed, they, they're curious. Oh, what's Dante? Who's bad? Who is that? I don't know. I never even heard of him until I heard that Dante Bo was listening to him or some other people mentioned him. I never heard of the guy. So for me, um, I just think it's, I just think, I think sometimes we don't take our uh, platform um, serious enough um, as to what influence we have on other people. So let me switch reels. Yeah. Christian getting tattoos. Yeah. A lot of Christians out there that feel it's okay to get a tattoo because we get they to feel the degree right now. Uh, yeah, they feel like they glorifying God. Uh -huh. And what is your perspective on Christians getting tattoos? This is super dope that you asked this though, because just the other day we was having this conversation, and I was talking to. Uh, one of my mentors, and um, I asked him about it. You know what he said? What? He said, I love tattoos. He said, I love them. He said, but once I surrender my life to Christ, I love the Holy Spirit more. And I realized that my body is 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 um is the is where the Holy Spirit is dwelling in, and I don't want to I don't want to mark it up. I feel like I'm perfectly made. So is the art nice? Yeah, it's cool. Um, but there's really no reason for me to mark up my body. Like I, I know we like to say, oh, I got this to glorify God. You the real way you glorify God is by the life that you live and the example that you live. You don't have to mark up your body to do that. So I'm you know I, I'm not 
the tattoo guy. I don't. I have two tattoos that I got a long time ago. And um, to be real with you, the Holy Spirit like convicted me from not getting any more tattoos after that. Let me switch reels. Yes, sir. What is your perspective on Christians being flashy? What is your perspective on Christians rolling maybe big gold Why chains? Why you didn't give Brian all these questions? Man? It just came. came to my mind right now, bro. <laughs> you got a big gold chain on you right there. I got a right? chain. I got you a got chain pull on. that book, big gold chain. Is that the? See, so you yeah, got the yeah. kingdom music gold yeah, yeah, chain yeah. right there. I got a little chain right. On so, what do you think about that? <laughs> and maybe a five hundred dollar suit. Uh, what is your perspective on um, flashiness? It's a good question, though. Uh, you know what's what is flashiness? I think. Listen. I think where your heart is matters more, right? Um, you know, I, I I think if if these I think if these things have you, what I mean is like this is what you find your identity in, then you should definitely stay away from it. Are these are the things that you cherish, or these are the things that that you idolize? Then 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 you're in the wrong space. But if these are things like uh, I'll, I'll I'll use my brother-in-law as 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 an example. I'll use Brian as an example. He gets attacked for oh he has a nice chain on it. He has these nice shoes. Oh, on. Brian got some thick chains. He got some. He got a couple thick chains. Okay. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I want him to be convicted so that he ends up giving me one of those chains. Oh, hold so, up, bro. I need one too. Yeah, though. So you let's, got to if one. we go real hard on him, he might get both of us a chain. Right. But anyway, uh, so I um um they see that, but what they don't see, and this isn't to you know brag but i'm just be honest he ain't bragging on himself i'm just bigging him up he gives so much he gives more well than since he gets. you brought that up what do you what is your perspective on i noticed there was some controversy with brian trail mm -hmm. about the way he dressed yeah right and mm -hmm. some would say that he's identifying too much with the world mm -hmm. in the way that he dresses yeah so let's generalize that to christians oh yeah that are still dressing like a gang member, oh. Christians that may be identifying with the thug I life. love this question. What is your perspective on that? I think that's the silliest, most foolish thing for somebody to say that I'm dressing like a gangster. I'm dressing like what I like to wear. I'm dressing like where I come from and what I'm comfortable in, right? Here's, I got a quick story. Woman house burned down years ago and um, she lost everything. I was able to get some people together. We raised money to you know, help her furnish her house again and get her a few clothes. I invited her to church, and she was like, I don't have any church clothes. That's the first red flag is that she thinks she had to dress a certain way to be received in the church. And so I went to my church, and I said, listen, this is, you know, this is when I had to, this is when I'm in leadership. I had to wear a suit and tie and all these different things. And I said, listen, this Sunday I'm going to dress down because I invited her, and I want her to feel welcome in the church. But I, I, would, push, I would push down or push against that thought mm -hmm. that, what about the idea of us being a standard okay. so that they can reach upward? Oh, I, I, I'm cool with that. But uh, but the reality is um, the, the the guys in the suits, when I was coming up, guess what? I, for me, I didn't feel like I can relate to them. I love the idea of this is the standard and we're pushing up and all of that. But as a young man, I couldn't, I didn't have the same uh, uh, maturity mentally that I do have right now where I can understand what you're saying, but then I couldn't have received what you were saying then. And so where I, the places that I'm going to, I'm cool with being relatable to them so that we can at least have a conversation. I went to a juvenile detention center one time and we had, and the new Jordans had just dropped that morning and I had them on, we walked in. And I was already like, how do I start conversations with them? Because juveniles can be the hardest to speak to. You want to know what happened first? First thing they did is said, oh, man, you got the new Jordans on. Those are nice. It sparked a conversation that led into us having di dialogue and talking about Jesus. Couldn't there be other things that spark conversations than yeah, Jordans? Yeah, but, that's, but that's, that's across the board. We can talk. We can break down every little thing if we want to get into If we want to break down every little now, detail. Let me, let me push back just a little bit. I'm good with that. Go ahead. Um, there are certain dresses, mm -hmm. dress codes, uh -huh. that promote gang culture, from and particularly for Los Angeles. Okay, yeah, I got right? you. I got you. There's certain dress dress yeah, yeah, style yeah, yeah. Yeah. that is a culture of killing and a culture of murder. Got you, got you. So, is there a line I to absolutely. what you're saying? I, I is there that, like a line? Oh, oh, I think there's wisdom. For sure. I mean, look, I know I know we in LA. I, I see the stories and everything. I got I, one of the one of my brothers over here. You know, uh, uh, we talk about certain hats. 
that we can't wear a certain. I respect that. I, I'm not trying to come to your uh, neighborhood and wear the hat that's gonna get, get it. We ain't, we I ain't here for no problems, right? right? I respect that. I think that there is wisdom. I don't think you should have your pants hanging off your butt when you're going over here to minister. I don't think that you should have a lot of these different things. I understand that, but I also understand meeting people where they are and allowing them to be who they are and to grow from there, right? So for me, I'm not I'm not dressing to be controversial. I'm literally wearing the stuff that I like to wear. I have no hidden motives behind what I'm wearing. And to be honest with you, most of the time, the stuff that I'm wearing is stuff like this with the Kingdom Music logo, different ministry t-shirts and different things like that. I just look flashy because I wear a hat and I wear and I got Jordans that I like, you know what I mean? Right. So, Two quick questions. Yes, sir. There's a guy named Swifty Blue. Okay, yeah. He's blowing up on social media okay. right now. Uh -huh. And getting millions of views, getting yes. interviews for podcasts. He's mm -hmm. actually from this city, Paramount. Okay. And he reminds me of Brian Trail. Amen. But on the opposite end, because right. he's not saved. Right. But you you have some level of success in music too. I mm -hmm. I bump your music. Don't even know you. I'm bumping your music. <laughs> Amen. So congratulations Amen. on Amen. that. Amen. Um, what would you say to Swifty Blue right now? Should I if, tell him right there? Yeah. Look at that camera. What um, would you say? The that that. You were created from the beginning. Every gift and every talent that you've ever been given has been was made um, and intended for you to glorify God. That's what all of our gifts and our talents are for. And, and you know, somewhere along the line, the world has tainted that and made it into how we become successful according to the world. Reality is success is what you do for the Lord and, and, and what God called you to do. So I just encourage you to, you know, step back and reevaluate and say, you know what, if I was given this gift and talent to glorify God, where do, how do I do that? Where does that begin? So um, just encouragement to you, man, keeping you in prayer, man, because, you know, that's what it is. Swifty Blue, if you're watching this, we praying for you. In we chapel of change. This is Pastor Brian in Paramount. If you ever need prayer, reach out. Amen. Antoine, one last question. Yes, sir. You travel different places. Yes, sir. I like to ask this, what do you see God doing today? Like, I want to be a part of what God is doing today. I want to be where God is moving. But what do you see God doing? I see God, I see God raising up those same people that we were talking about that dress a certain way or look a certain way. And the reality is that's why I'm happy with, with being relatable to them because they, they, they look at some of us and they don't see themselves being able to be there, right? But I see God moving in the lives of the people who are not the typical Christian. They don't look Christian. They, you know, they got, ta they, you know, we talked about tattoos. They, they figure, oh, I already got these, I can't be. I see God raising up those people that people counted out and never said would be anything and never said could be saved and never said can be a man of God and could be better fathers and husbands. I see God raising up those same people that everybody counted out. And that's what encourages me. And that's what keeps me going to all these different places. Amen. Thanks for Amen. sharing. That's yes, Antoine Hill, Kingdom Music. Check yeah. him out on YouTube. Amen. We out of here.